Okay, in today's video, we're going to be looking at aquatic chemistry. This is a very interesting topic because it, you have a chance to apply all the principles of thermodynamics and chemical kinetics that you've studied this fall. Right, as you know, water continually transforms the surface of the earth. And this is done through interaction with solid surface as well as transport of dissolved and suspended matter. We'll talk about dissolved matter and suspended matter in another video. Okay? Water is essential to life and central to human activity. Without water, nothing really works. Hmm? So most reactions in aqueous solutions can be placed in one of the following categories. We have acid base, which is, uh, for example, dissociation of carbonic acid, where H2CO3 gives you H plus and HCO3 minus. We have complexation, example, hydrolysis of mercury, where mercury plus water to give you mercury hydroxide plus H plus. Then you have uh, dissolution and precipitation. Example, we have dissolution of orthoclase. This is a potassium feldspar. So you have potassium aluminum silicate plus H plus, to, plus water to give you aluminum hydroxide plus potassium plus H4SiO4. Now the adsorption, a desorption example, adsorption of manganese on a clay surface, where this is basically your um, clay surface here. Okay. Then you have manganese adsorbed onto that to give you this complex here. So we're using this symbol okay, to indicate that the surface of the clay. Now, acid-base reactions basically involve uh, all kinds of reactions, and many reactions are basically pH-dependent. While pH represents the hydrogen ion or proton ion concentration, the hydroxide ion concentration is easily calculated from the pH since the proton and hydroxide concentrations are related by the dissociation constant for water, which is nothing but Kw is equals to AH into AOH. Mm -hmm. So basically this into this, the activity of hydrogen into activity of OH gives you the hydrolysis constant for water. The value for <coughs> Kw, like all equilibrium constants, depends on temperature, but basically it is down to about 10 to the power minus 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. Arrhenius defines acid as a substance that upon solution in water releases free protons, and protons in this case we are referring to hydrogen. Okay? Whereas a base is a substance that releases hydroxide ions, OH uh, minus, in solution. Okay, um, chemists generally prefer the definition of Bronsted who define acid and base as proton donors and proton acceptors, respectively. The strength of an acid or base is measured by the tendency to donate or accept protons. So the dissociation constant for an acid or base is a quantitative measure of this tendency and thus is a good indication of the strength. For example, in the dissociation of HCl, HCl gives you H plus plus Cl minus. And this has a dissociation constant given by KHCl gives you activity of HCH plus into activity of chloride divided by activity of HCl to give you 10 to the power of 3. The equilibrium constant for dissociation of hydrogen sulfide is written in this form. For example, H2S gives you H plus plus HS minus, and that equilibrium constant reduces down to this format, where KH2S equals to AH plus activity of hydrogen into activity of hydrogen sulfide divided by activity of H2S to give you 10 to the power of minus 7.1. Therefore, remember, H2S is a weak acid because very few of the H2S molecules actually dissociate except at high 
Metal hydroxides can either donate or accept protons, depending on the resident pH. For example, H, ALOH2 plus hydrogen to give you ALOH2 plus, plus water, and OALOH2 plus OH minus to give you ALOH3 plus water. Compounds can either accept or donate protons and these are basically said to be amphoteric in nature. Right, I hope you enjoyed um, learning about this part of aquatic chemistry as much as I've enjoyed teaching it to you. Look out for more videos on aquatic chemistry as I keep posting them and have fun studying.